Hello good people, how's it going? Thank you for a thousand subscribers recently, I do appreciate it. I'm going to be posting more regularly soon. Uh, I'm in the middle of some things right now which are keeping me really busy. But uh, today uh, I have something different for you. I've, I have this old MacBook Pro from 2012 that's been sitting collecting dust because it's just not as fast. And uh, today I decided to put an SSD in there and see if that will make a difference. So here we go. So first, let's see how long it takes for this mid-2012 MacBook Pro to boot up before the upgrade. So what's slowing this computer down is the hard drive. The processor is i7 2.3 GHz and RAM is 16 GB DDR3. So everything else is not that bad, but the hard drive is definitely dated. If you press the power button and then go make yourself a cup of coffee, then by the time you're done, it should be ready, which is pretty bad. So let's see if we can change that with the upgrade. But once you have the right screwdriver for the job, you can start removing screws from the back panel. This is a fairly straightforward process, but some of those screws are longer than the others, so make sure you keep track of them. Once you've removed all the screws, you're ready to lift the back panel. And look at that. Easy access to the hard drive. Now that the drive is exposed, we're ready to take out the screws on the plastic panel that are holding down the drive. One thing I love about these older MacBooks is that you can do these kind of upgrades yourself without having to take it to the Apple Store, which is, you know, great. Once you're done taking out the screws, you can then lift that small plastic panel and set it aside, which will free the drive. The drive is not free, and you can lift it up using that piece of plastic that's attached to the drive. It's still connected to this connector that you will have to remove before the drive is completely free. So you can gently pull on it until the drive is free. There it is, the old archaic 5400 RPM hard drive that was really slowing down the Mac. Now we're ready to replace this hard drive with the new one that we just bought, but before you do that, remember to remove the four screws on the sides of this drive because we're gonna need that for the new drive. Once you've removed all the screws from this old hard drive, we're ready to bring in our new drive. And this is a Samsung 860 one terabyte solid state drive, so this should significantly improve the performance on our Mac, but we'll see. So the screws that you removed from the old hard drive, we have to now put into the Samsung drive. So there's four screws, two on each side, once we have all the screws in place, we're ready to plug the connector. And once we have the connector connected, we can try to slide that SSD in its slot. Notice that it won't fit properly if you don't slide it in a slot. So make sure that you slide it into its slot properly. And only then can you screw it back in. Now we're ready to place that small plastic panel back in over the SSD along with its two screws so that it, it can hold the SSD down properly. So once the plastic panel is placed properly over the hard drive, we screw it back in. Once the SSD is secure inside, we're ready to screw the panel back on.
All right, now that the panel is secured, let's try to boot it up and see what happens. And it doesn't work. As you've probably guessed it, it doesn't work yet because the new SSD doesn't have anything on it. It doesn't have the operating system. So what we need to do is immediately after power on, press command R and keep holding it until you see the Mac utilities menu. From there, we can connect to the internet and let it download some tools that we'll need next. So let it reboot after it's done downloading the tools and then we can go in disk utility and over there we need to see if our new SSD is being detected correctly so once you go in disk utility you can see that the Samsung 860 SSD is right there but it says that it's un uh, uninitialized which means that we need to erase it and then we're ready to install the operating system on it Make sure that it has the correct formatting. We need the Mac OS Extended Journal formatting. And then you can name the disk anything you like. Once we're done with that step, we can exit Disk Utility and install Mac OS on this SSD. After the operating system had finished installing, I parted it on and I noticed that now it only takes about 40 seconds from the time I press the power button to the time that I can access, for example, a browser window uh, after the boot up. So that's pretty great compared to the three minutes and something seconds that it took before I changed the hard drive. And, and by the way, the, the hard drive, uh, the change in the drive is the only change that I've made to, this, uh, to the hardware. The, the RAM is the same and the CPU is the same and everything else is the same. Final update, I've been using this MacBook Pro for about a week now, just testing it out, and it can handle pretty much everything I throw at, I've thrown at it so far pretty well. So for example, I've been editing this uh, video on this MacBook Pro, and it did perfectly fine on it. There was no lag, and um, I'm happy with the snappy performance. It's pretty amazing when you think about it that a MacBook from mid-2012 is still able to uh, do well today. and um, I mean, it's, never, it's not going to be anywhere close to the performance of a you know, MacBook Pro from 2018 or something. But then, but then this MacBook doesn't have that shitty butterfly keyboard either. So, <laughs> so, I, so I guess uh, it's still a win in my book. And yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, this uh, simple upgrade was able to uh, make my MacBook, my old MacBook Pro pretty snappy. All right, people, take care. I'll see you in the next video.